Shalom. First and foremost, I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Kakodash. Yahweh being the Heavenly Father, meaning He is, He exists, He to be. Ba in ha the sham name Yahweh Shai being the only begotten Son, meaning He delivers, He saves. Rakhakodash, Holy Spirit. All right, literally translated, uh, Spirit Holy. All right, double honors unto the apostles and elders of great most and never well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all. Back at it again with another lesson the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashmel Shai. Lord willing, this video is edifying. And this is just something, you know, the brothers and I was meditating on last night, man. You know, two thirds ain't never gonna change, man. All right, two thirds will never change. You know, the only time they're gonna change, if you will, and what I mean by change is like, you know, you expect righteousness to come from them, you expect them to be brotherly, you expect them to, you know what I'm saying, be upright. But at the end of the day, you know. They, they uh, worship the image of the beast, man. They worship Esau, Edom. They worship the serpent. And, um, you know, they've been deceived by this world, man, because ultimately their name is not written in the Lamb's Book of Life. All right? So they're wooed by this beast system. So, you know, we can't expect them to conduct themselves like you would uh, expect a, a member of the flock of Yahweh Bashmashad to conduct themselves because at the end of the day, they're technically, you know, even though they're Israel in the flesh, they're not Israel in the spirit. All right. So they're never going to change. So really, the best thing to do is just, you know, when you're dealing amongst two thirds, man, you got to kind of expect them to to be wicked, to not be brotherly, to be, you know, who, who the Lord programmed them to be. OK, so, you know, we have to walk with wisdom. We have to walk accordingly, as the scriptures say, walk in wisdom toward them that are without man. You know, so you meaning those who are without the wisdom of Yahweh, Bashem Hashem. We have to walk in wisdom toward them, man. You know, because really, you never know what can go down. At the end of the day, everything's the will, the will of the Lord, but we just have to move with wisdom, man. This is Zechariah 13 and 8. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein. So two thirds of our people, they're going to be destroyed. But that one third representing the remnant, the elect, is going to be left for salvation. Verse 9, I will bring the third part through the fire and, I'll, and will refine them as silver is refined and will try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name and I will hear them. I will say it is my people and they shall say the Lord is my power, man. That's right. You see? So, you know, the one third, they're going to trust in Yahweh Bashem Shai. They're going to serve the Lord. All right? But two thirds of our people, they're going to be cut off and die because really, you know, they're not following after the Lord, man. Okay, they despise Yahweh Bashem Shai. So if they despise Yahweh Bashem Shai, what makes you think they won't despise us? Like Yahweh Shai said, if they have received your saying, it's because they received mine as well. If they, he that uh, hated you, hated me. He that hated me, hated my father, which sent me, man. Okay. Uh, Jeremiah 15 and 1 Then said the Lord unto me, though Moses and Samuel stood before me, yet my mind could not be toward this people. Cast them out of my sight and let them go forth, man. Right. So the Lord said, look, though Moses and Samuel stood before me, right? Though you had the law and the prophets to stand before Yahweh Bashmal Shai, to witness and to, you know, I guess you could say vouch for Israel. The Lord said, yeah, his mind cannot be towards his people. Referring to who? Two thirds of our people, man. Because their mind is not towards Yahweh Bashem Shai. And the Most High is not a respective person, man. The Lord hates all evildoers, man, whether you're an Israelite or not. If you're being an evildoer, the Lord hates that, man. Okay, let me get that precept real quick. Strach Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 6. For the Most High hated sinners. Matter of fact, let me get this real quick. Strach Ecclesiastes 12 and 1. When thou wilt do good, know to whom thou doest it. So shall thou be thanked for thy benefits. That's right, man. You got to know who you're doing good to, man. All right, because you open up your heart to a two third, and he's going and he's going to show you, he's going to show you why you should have never done that, man. You know, you know, you, you it's like, man, you can't really you can't really show that compassion and that loving kindness towards two thirds, man. Because no matter how peaceable you try to be towards Jake, no matter how brotherly you try to be towards Jake, man, they're not going to acknowledge it, man. Look what happened with our forefather uh, Jeremiah, man. Okay, Jeremiah was like, man, Lord, remember I was I was praying towards you for this people yeah lord about that yeah deliver their wives let their wives be, be be bereaved of their children and be widows man 
You know, let a cry be heard upon their house when a troop comes suddenly upon them. You know, Jeremiah threw a curse on the wicked of our people, man, because here it is. Jeremiah was praying to them for the Lord to have mercy on them. And they were secretly plotting devices against Jeremiah, man. You know, Lord willing, we'll get there. Okay. Ecclesiastes of Sirach chapter 12, verse 2. Do good to the godly man and thou shalt find a recompense. And if not from him, yet from the most high. There can no good come to him that is always occupied in evil, nor to him that giveth no alms. Verse 4, give to the godly man and help not a sinner, man. Right. So if you know a nigga a two-third, you know, you done told him about the truth, you know what I'm saying? He don't receive you. He's just wicked. Okay. And he he's seeking your help. You know, you you gotta uh you gotta turn the shoulder on him, man. You gotta be cold-hearted towards him, man. Because at the end of the day, you helping him is uh pretty much you interfering with the most high's judgment. Because the Lord might have him go through a certain circumstance, situation, and just because you know you're helping now, you know, you're interfering with judgment. Now that's gonna get you judged, man. Let that nigga struggle on his own. And I know it might sound cold-hearted, man, but the Lord the Lord removed that compassion from two-thirds of our people, man. That's in the book of Jeremiah, man. I'm going to get that uh, uh, next, if the Lord allows. All right? It says, do well unto him that is lowly, but give not to the ungodly. Hold back thy bread and give it not unto him, lest he overmaster thee thereby. For else thou shalt receive twice as much evil for all the good thou shalt have done unto him. That's right, man. So the Lord, like, look, whatever you, whatever a good thing you do to him, you're going to get twice more evil back, man. And that's why you can't be brotherly with two-thirds, man. You, they ain't never going to change, man. That don't mean you go out your way to start an issue with them. That don't mean you go out your way to, you know, like we say, if it be possible, be at peace with all men, you know? Okay? So, you know, you try your best to be peaceful with them, but don't don't get it twisted don't be naive don't open up your heart to these dudes man because they will turn their back and shit on you same way they did to our lord yahweh shai here it is yahweh shai died on the crucif uh on the cross for us and they were still talking shit man okay you got to remember these are the same niggas that said uh give us barabbas man all right let his blood be upon us and our children these are the same niggas who said we have no king but caesar man okay Lock you. All right, verse six says, "For the Most High hated sinners, and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly, and keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment." Man, that's right, man. So the Most High hated sinners, man. Okay, the Lord hates these niggas, man. All right, give unto the give unto the good and help not the sinner, man. That's right. And I know I said I was going to get this precept next. So let me get this precept. But I want to show you that the Lord ain't dealing with these niggas, man. This is uh, Jeremiah 16 and verse uh, 3. For thus saith the Lord concerning the sons and concerning the daughters that are born in this place and concerning their mothers that bear them and concerning their fathers that begat them in this land. They shall die of grievous deaths. They shall not be lamented. Neither shall they be buried, but they shall be as dung upon the face of the earth. And they shall be consumed by the sword and by famine. And their carcasses shall be meat for the fowls of heaven and for the beast of the earth, man. Right. Yahweh shall I get ready to destroy these niggas, man. Okay. By way of the sword, by way of the famine, by way of the wild beast, the fowls, so on and so forth, man. Verse 5, for thus saith the Lord, enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament nor bemoan them. Right, don't, don't feel bad for these niggas, man. Don't feel bad for these niggas when the Lord start putting their ass to death. Don't feel bad, man. Okay, don't cry for them, don't pray for them. All right, you got to have that cold shoulder towards two-thirds of our people because they're wicked, man. Really, you got to look at their ass like they're Edomites, man. Edomites with, a, with, with talent, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Okay. And I know it might be a stumbling block because, you know, yeah, brother, they're still Israel, brother. They're still Israelites, brother. They still are people. Yes, that's true, but they're not our people on this side, man. All right. What do you, how would I say? Let me get that scripture real quick. Two thirds ain't our people on this side, man. All right. They're the enemy. 
They really are, you know, and, and you could be naive if you want to, but they'll, they'll, they won't tarry with you, man. They'll get straight to it. And then you'll be like, damn, you know, that brother was right. He did say two thirds was the enemy. Yeah. How about Shmuel Shai told us that already, man. You know, Matthew 12 and, uh, Verse 46, while he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without desire to speak with him. Then one said unto him, behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without desire to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto them that told him, who is my mother and who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, behold, my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same as my brother and sister and mother, man. That's right, man. So that's who our true family is, man. Members of the flock, man. All right. Of course, we have brothers. We have sisters. We have, you know, fathers, mothers, biological family members, of course. You know, but at the end of the day, our true family members are the ones who are following after Yahweh by Shemesh That's our true family, man. And you're going to see that come in these times, man. Your own family members might be the ones who sell you out to Esau. Try to get you thrown in the FEMA camp. Try to get you thrown in prison so that they could uh, get their C hip and get their reward from Esau Edom, man. Esau is going to use your own family against you, man. All right? A lot of people's family members are going to turn their back and betray them in that day. Yahweh Shai said it. Man's foes shall be there of his own household. Also tells that in the book of Micah, the seventh chapter, man. So your true family is the members of the flock, man. Okay? You know? Jeremiah 5, uh, Jeremiah 16 and 5. Let me read it again. For thus saith the Lord, enter not into the house of mourning, neither go to lament nor bemoan them. For I have taken away my peace for this from this people, saith the Lord, even loving kindness and mercies, man. Both the great and the small shall die in this land. They shall not be buried, neither shall men lament for them, nor cut themselves, nor make themselves bald for them. All right? So, you know, people ain't going to be able to mourn for these people when all hell is breaking loose because a lot of shit going to be going on, man. You know, you see somebody die right next to you. You ain't going to have time to uh, sit there and gather their body and bury it in most cases, you know, because guess what? There's going to be all hell breaking loose, man. So they're going to be trying to cover their own ass, man. And then once they get a moment to breathe and sit down for a second, they're going to cry for Pookie and Ray Ray, man. These are the times we're coming into, man. Yeah, how about Shemeshine playing no games, man? The Lord was never playing games, but especially not now, man. Especially not now. Um, this is a precept to Sirach 12 and 2, Proverbs 19 and 17. He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth them to the Lord, and that which he hath given will he pay him again. So that's a precept to Sirach 12 and 2. But I wanted to get that precept in particular in the book of Tobit, where Tobit even said this too through the Spirit. Tobit chapter 4. Starting at uh, uh, verse 16, it says, Give of thy bread to the hungry and of thy garments to them that are naked. And according to thine abundance, give alms and let not thine eye be envious. All right. When thou givest alms, man, that's right. OK. And that's how you're supposed to be. That's the type of spirit you're supposed to come in when you give alms to the members of the elect, the hopeful members of the elect. It says, pour out thy bread upon the burial of the just, but give nothing to the wicked. Okay, that's right, man. Give nothing to the wicked. Help not a sinner. All right. So that's the point right there, man. You know, we can't be we can't we can't be compassionate with two thirds of our people, man, because they don't acknowledge the they don't they don't acknowledge it, man. All right. They didn't acknowledge the compassions and the mercies that the Heavenly Father gave them. So how much more us, man? And, the, and no one can love. No one can love Israel, including the two-thirds, more than the Heavenly Father, man. Because you got a lot of jakes out here when that uh, captain save a two-thirds spirit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They and that captain save a two-thirds spirit, man. Hey, brother, they still Israel, brother. And, and yes, indeed, they are still Israel. But they don't fucking... They don't, they don't act like it, man. They act like brute beast. Okay? They act like brute beast. And that's why Yahweh Bashmashah is going to punish them, man. All right? And, and believe it or not, a lot of these two-third niggas, they know they're Israelites. They know that they descend from the 12 tribes of Israel. Some of these niggas even know their own tribe. Okay? But, but is that stopping them from being wicked? Hell no. Okay? Jeremiah 9. 
and uh, 25. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will punish all them which are circumcised with the uncircumcised, Egypt and Judah and Edom and the children of Ammon and Moab and all that in the utmost corners that dwell in the wilderness. For all these nations are uncircumcised and all the house of Israel are uncircumcised in their heart, man. That's right, man. So two thirds of our people, they're, uncir they're spiritually uncircumcised in the mind and in their spirit, man. They're like the heathen right now, man. That's how the Heavenly Father sees them. The Heavenly Father sees them like a like an Edomite, you know, or a heathen, even though they're Israelites in the flesh. Ain't that something? Okay, and that goes to show you it's not just about you being an Israelite. Like John the Baptist said, say not we have Abraham to our father. Let me get that real quick. There's a lot of dudes, oh, yeah, brother, are you Israel too, brother? Okay, what does that mean, man? You know, of course it's important to be an Israelite, of course. Don't get me wrong. But are you conducting yourself the way an Israelite should be conducting himself? If not, then really, it's, it, it, you know, it's, it's not holding much weight, man. Okay? This is, uh, I'm going to read the book of Luke. Luke 3 and 8. Bring, their, bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance. Okay? That's what we need to be doing. We need to be bringing forth fruits worthy of repentance. We need to be conducting ourselves worthy of the salvation of the Lord. Like scripture say in Ephesians, let us walk worthy of the vocation wherewith we've been called, man. Okay? It says, bring forth, therefore, fruits worthy of repentance and begin not to say within yourselves, we have Abraham to our father. For I say unto you that the most high is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham, man. That's right, man. Okay. The heavenly father is far out, man. He could, he could raise up stones to do this work, to prophesy. Okay. The heavenly father could materialize stones. You know what I'm saying? To, to do the work, man. All right. Okay, the Heavenly Father can, can raise up new prophets easily, man. You know, a lot of dudes, they trust in the fact, yeah, I'm an Israelite. It don't matter, man. Okay, say not you have Abraham to your father, man. You can't, you can't trust in that. And what do you, how wish I say? You, how wish I told these jakes, man? You know, let me get this real quick. Um... Uh. This is um, John chapter 8 and verse 33. Let me start at 31. John 8 and 31. Then said Yahweh Shai to those Jews which believed on him. If you continue my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answer him, We be Abraham's seed, and were never in bondage to any man. How sayest thou, ye shall be made free? Yahweh shall answer them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committed sin is the servant of sin. And that's what two-thirds of our people are, man. They're servants of sin and iniquity. Okay? It says, And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. And we are free through Yahweh Shai. We have liberty through Yahweh Shai, man. All right, but two thirds of our people are still trapped under the chains of darkness. They're still, I mean, we're in the chains of darkness too, but spiritually we're being freed from those chains. Two thirds are still physically and spiritually trapped under those chains. They're still trapped under Satan's will, taken captive by Satan's will, man. All right, as the scriptures say in, uh, in, uh, I think that might be, um, let me see, I know it's somewhere in the Gospels. Second Timothy two and twenty six, and that they may, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And that's the thing about two thirds of our people; they're still servants of sin. They can take, they can be taken captive by Satan, all right, by at his will. You know. Hello. Thank. You. So the point being, you know, this can happen to us too, but we have a more spiritual immunity built up to it. But two thirds, a demon can hop on a two third at any moment. You know, the brother Q says this through the spirit. Two thirds are unpredictable, man. Okay, a demon can hop at them at any moment and they can start acting weird and, and, and you know, treating you differently, man. The scriptures speak about how, you know, the wicked are estranged from the womb. Now, of course, we use this scripture for Esau, but two thirds are people that, that can apply to them too.
okay? Because from the womb, they've been wicked, okay? From the womb, you know, they've been set up to be a two-third. They've been estranged from Yahweh Bashem El Shai, man, okay? Even if they might have had zeal, you know, at one point in their life, but really, they never was really with the Lord. The Lord was never really with them like that, man, you know? But now, nah, like I said, Psalms 58 is really going into Esau being wicked. But two thirds are strange, are strange too, man. Huh? Okay, you know, and 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 do not, bro, do not be naive and and, and trust the two third, man, and think that you, you they have your best interest, man. Because really, like like there's a saying, there's no honor amongst thieves, man. There ain't no code amongst two thirds, you know. Even though they still Israel, all right. But you're going to see, man, when all hell breaks loose, you're going to start to see them act different, man. They're going to start acting different, man. But let me uh, continue on this, John. This is uh, John chapter 8. And uh, verse 37, I know that you are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me because my word have no place in you. You see? Right. So even though you're still an Israelite, you're of Abraham's seed. If Yahweh Shai's word has no place in you, then, you know, you're going to be destroyed regardless. Okay. I speak that which I have seen with my father and you do that which you have seen with your father. Verse 39, they answered him and said unto him, Abraham... Abraham is our father. Yahweh shall say unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that have told you the truth, which I have heard of the Most High. This did not Abraham, right? Because Abraham was an upright man. And when Yahweh Shai was around, when Abraham was on the scene, Abraham rejoiced to see Yahweh Shai, man. It says, you do the deeds of your father. Then said they to him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even the most high. Yahweh shall send unto them, if the most high were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from the most high. That's right, man. Okay, two thirds. They're not, uh, they're not, they're not born of the spirit. You know, it says, uh, neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Verse 43, why do you not, why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my word. Ye, Cause why they're uncircumcised in their heart and in their ears, man. Okay. It says ye are of your father, the devil and the lust of your father, ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh the lie, he speaketh of his own for he is a liar and the father of it, man. And because I tell you the truth, ye believe me not. You see? So that's the point right there, man. Two thirds there of their father to the devil, man. They've been, they've been wicked, man. Okay. That's why the Lord said about two thirds. He said, uh, let me get this real quick. Yeah. Come on, man. Not be towards this people, right? Let me get this one too. The Lord pretty much disowned two thirds of our people, man. You know, on this side. Deuteronomy 32, that's spiritual, two-third. <laughs> Deuteronomy 32 and 5, they have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Now, that's right, man. That's right, man. So the Lord ain't dealing with two-thirds of our people. They are a perverse, crooked generation, man. That's why they got to be destroyed. So don't be naive, okay, and, and think they got your best interest at heart, man. All right, they're going to start acting weird, man. Jeremiah 9 and 4, take ye heed every one of his neighbor and trust ye not in any brother for every brother will utterly supplant and every neighbor will walk with slanders and they will deceive, deceive everyone his neighbor and will not speak the truth. They have taught their tongue to speak lies and weary themselves to commit iniquity. That's right, man. So you got to take heed to these dudes, man. Take heed to two thirds of our people, man. Jeremiah 5 and 26, for among my people are found wicked men, right? So you have Israelites who are wicked. They lay wait. As he that set a snares, they set a trap, they catch men. As a cage is full of birds, so are the houses full of deceit. Therefore, they have become great and waxen rich, right? Verse 29, shall I not visit 
Oh, slack you. I got to get verse 28. I got to. Jeremiah 5 and 28. They are waxing fat. They shine. Yeah, they overpass the deeds of the wicked, man. Two thirds of our people overpass the deeds of the wicked, man. They judge not the cause, the cause of the fatherless, yet they prosper in the right of the needy. Do they not judge, man? Okay. Shall I not visit for these things, saith the Lord? Shall not my soul be avenged on such a nation as this? You see? So, you know, you can't trust two-thirds, man. If two-thirds is more wicked than Esau, then that goes to show you you can't trust him, man. Because Esau is known as the wicked. That's why it says they overpass the deeds of the wicked, man. They surpass the deeds of the wicked. All right, microphone 7 and 4. The best of them is as a briar. The most upright is sharper than a thorn hedge, man. The day of thy watchman and the day of thy and thy visitation cometh. Now shall be their perplexity. Trust ye not in a friend. And that perplexity is going into when all hell breaks loose, man. They're gonna be they're gonna be perplexed and troubled in that day. Like how I said in Luke 21. You know, men's heart fell in them for fear and, and perplexity, right? Trust ye not in a friend, put ye not confidence in the God, keep the doors of thy mouth from her that lieth in thy bosom. For the son dishonoreth the father, the daughter rises up against her mother, the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's enemies are the men of his own house, man. Therefore, I will look unto the Lord. I will wait for the power of my salvation. My power will hear me, man. That's it, man. Okay? So two-thirds, they're going to start acting weird. They're going to estrange themselves. They're going to sell us out, man. They're going to try to sell us out at least. All right? But, you know, it's up to Yahweh Shai whether he delivers us up to Esau, Edom or not. Regardless of what two-thirds try to you know, snitch on us for, man. And we ain't doing anything in wickedness for them to be snitching, you know, but, you know, they 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 worship the beast system. They worship the image of the beast. Okay. This is, uh... Revelation 13 and 8. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. That's right. So everybody who's not of the elect pretty much worships this beast image, man, including two thirds of our people, man. Worships the Edomite philosophy, including two thirds of our people, man. Matthew 10 and 21. And the brother shall deliver up the brother to death and the father the child and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. Right. Here it is. They're hating us because we're following after Yahweh Shemel Shai. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee to another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall have not gone over the cities of Israel to the Son of Man be come. I'm going to skip down to verse 34. Matthew 10 and 34. Think not I am come to send peace on earth. I came not to send peace but a sword. Right. Yahweh Shai is coming back to bring division, man. All right. We're not supposed to be buddy, buddy. With these wicked ass niggas, man. Scripture say, be not unequally yoked with unbelievers, man. Okay? For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foe shall be there of his own household. He that loveth father and mother more than me is not worthy of me, he, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me, man. That's right, man. Okay? You know, well, these are the times that we're coming into. Two-thirds going to try to sell you out for, for, for. You know, some incentives, man. That's why it says in 2 Edges 15 and 19, A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy the house with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation, man. All right? So they ain't going to have pity on us in that day when they're starving, famished, hungry. They're going to they gonna sell out, man. Okay? They're going to try to put you to death. Here it is. You knew this nigga your whole life. He, he calling you his brother. And now when a famine hits, you start to see his true intentions, man. That's why the scriptures say, if thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. For some man is a friend for his own occasion, man. All right. Second Ezra 6 and 24. At that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies. And the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountains shall stand still. And in three hours they shall not run. Right. Friends fighting like enemies, man. 
can't trust these niggas, man. Second Ezra 5 and 9, and salt water shall be found in the sweet, and all friends shall destroy one another. Then shall wit hide itself and understand it withdraw itself into a secret chamber. That's right, man. And there's going to be a famine of the word. All right. Zechariah 8 and 10. For before these days, there was no hire for man nor any hire for beast. Neither was there any peace to him that went out or came in because of the affliction. For I set all men, everyone against his neighbor. That's right, man. So when all hell breaks loose, man, hey, that, that's when you're going to see the most that you can't trust two thirds, man. The Lord will show you signs already right now that you can't trust them. But especially when affliction comes, man. All right. Like Scripture said, enemy cannot be hidden in adversity, man. And a friend cannot be known in prosperity. All right. Zechariah 14 and 13 and shall come to pass in that day there shall be that a great tumult from the Lord shall be among them and they shall lay hold everyone on the hand of his neighbor and his hand shall rise up against the hand of his neighbor man right Matthew 24 and 7 many for many for a nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places man okay so you're gonna see man Two thirds, they're gonna start acting weird, man. Just like how King Saul was acting weird around King David. First Samuel eighteen and seven, and when the women and the women answered one another as they played and said, "Saul hath slain in his thousands, and David his ten thousands." And Saul was very wroth, and the saying displeased him, and he said, "They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can he have more than but the kingdom?" And Saul eyed David from that day. And forward, man. Right. He had an evil eye towards him, man. Okay. You know, every time he's seen King David, man, I hate this nigga, man. You know, that's the same way two thirds beat, man. Okay. They got that evil eye towards. Them. That's the curses, man. Deuteronomy 28. They're going to estrange themselves from us, man. Just like how, uh, what happened with Laban and, 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 and Jacob, man. You know, which I speak as a man. You know, that, that could potentially be the same spirit coming back. What happened between uh, King Saul and King David, man? Okay. Or Saul and King David, rather. Because Saul got his rulership taken away. All right. But anyways, you know, hey, man, just be mindful of this stuff, man. Two thirds, they ain't right, man. Okay. They are not right, man. And you can't trust them, man. All right, Sirach Ecclesiastes 8 and 19. Open not thine heart to every man, lest he requite thee with a shrewd turn, man. That's right, man. So we can't be compassionate and open our heart to these two-thirds, man, because they're going to show us why, you know, why exactly why the Lord going to destroy them, man. They're going to show us why the Lord going to kill two-thirds of our people, man. The Most High is not a man that he should lie nor repent, man. Okay, so if the Lord made somebody a two-third, you're going to see why the Lord made that person a two-third, man. Okay? This is uh, Jeremiah 14 and 10. Thus saith the Lord unto this people, they have loved to wander. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore, the Lord doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. All right. Yeah. They wander from the way of understanding. Therefore, they're going to remain in the congregation of the dead. Then said the Lord unto me, pray not for this people for their good. Right. So we ain't supposed to be trying to pray for two thirds, man, for their good and for their welfare, man. Fuck them, man. Okay. Yeah, I know it sounds harsh. I know it sounds cold. But this is scriptural. We're not supposed to feel bad for these niggas, man. Okay? When they fast, I will not hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, I will not accept them. But I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence, man. We're not supposed to have any mercy upon these evildoers, man. King David said to himself, Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee. OK, when it comes to the wicked, we show no mercy to the wicked, man. All right. But to the elect, to the righteous, you be merciful, you be pitiful, just as you would hope to have mercy from Yahweh Shemashai. But for these evildoers, man, ain't no time to show mercy on their ass, man. Execute the judgment of the Lord, man. OK. Here's another one. Just like how Jeremiah was like, look, I, Lord, I was I was vouching for them, Lord. Right. Let me, let me get this real quick, because Jeremiah 18 is a good one, but I want to get this one real quick. Jeremiah 12 and 3. Oh, no, is that what I wanted?
Here it is. Jeremiah 11 and verse 18. And the Lord hath given me knowledge of it, and I know it. Then thou shootest me their doings. But I was like a lamb or an ox that is brought to the slaughter, and I knew not that they had devised devices against me, saying, Let us destroy the tree with the fruit thereof, and let us cut him off from the land of the living, that his name may be no more remembered. And that's what two-thirds of our people do, man. Here it is. They, they, they fake the funk like they cool with you. But really, they're practicing wickedness, man. Just like they did with uh, Jeremiah, man. Okay? It says, but Lord of hosts, but O oh, Lord of hosts that judges righteously, that tries the reins in the heart. Let me see thy vengeance on them. For unto thee have I revealed my cause. You see, therefore, thus saith the Lord of the men of Anathoth. All right. Which in the Hebrew is Anawath. All right. Uh, or Anawath, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Which, uh. Basically means prayers answered, okay? And the Lord answered Jeremiah's prayers, man. He answered his supplications upon the wicked of our people, man. You know, and he heard his cry in the time of his affliction. All right, but let me get this. Uh, let me continue. All right, and Anathoth is a city uh, where the priests dwelt. All right, it was like a Levite suburb city in the land of Benjamin. Okay, therefore, thus said the Lord, the, uh, the men of Israel... The men of Anathoth that seek thy life, saying, Prophesy not in the name of the Lord that thou die not by our hand. Here it is. These niggas are wicked as hell. They wanted to kill Jeremiah for prophesying in the name of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will punish them. The young men shall die by the sword. Their sons and their daughters shall die by famine. And there shall be no remnant of them, for I will bring evil upon the men of Anathoth, even the year of their visitation. And that time is coming, man. That time of their visitation is coming, man. All right. Jeremiah 18 and 20. Shall evil be recompensed for good? Right. Because here it is. You, you'll be good to two thirds. You'll be peaceful with them and they'll recompense you evil, man. This is for they have digged a pit for my soul. Remember that I stood before thee to speak good for them and to turn away thy wrath from them. Therefore, deliver up their children to the famine and pour out their blood by the force of the sword and let their wives be bereaved of their children and be widows, man. And let their men be put to death. Let their young men be slain by the sword in battle. Let a cry be heard from the houses when thou shalt bring a troop suddenly upon them. For they have digged a pit to take me and hid snares for my feet. Yet, Lord, thou knowest all their counsel against me to slay me. Forgive not their iniquity, neither blot out their sin from thy sight. But let them be overthrown before thee. Deal dust with them in the time of thine anger, man. And the time of Yahweh Bashem and Shai's anger is, is, is soon quickly approaching upon us, man. All right, so, so don't be pitiful for these two-third ass niggas. Don't feel bad for two-thirds, man. All right, when the Lord start putting their ass to death, man. All right, let me see if I get that priest up. All right, because I remember one time I was at work and I was meditating on this one nigga who I believe was a two-third. And that little bit of, that little compassionate side came out of me and the Lord did something to me. Which I knew through the spirit, I was like, okay, that's the Lord telling me don't feel bad for these niggas, man. All right? Ezekiel 9 and 4. And the Lord said unto him, go through the midst of the, of the city, through the midst of Jerusalem, and set a mark upon the forehead of the men that sign, that cry for all the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And to the others, he said in my hearing, go ye after him through the city and smite. Let not your eyes spare, neither have ye pity. This is the Lord talking to the angels, putting Jake to death, the wicked of our people to death, man. All right, the Lord said, look, set a mark of exemption from judgment upon the elect, Ezekiel 9 and 4, and for the wicked, let not your eyes spare, don't have pity on them, man. Don't feel bad for these wicked niggas, man. Slay utterly old and young, both maids and little children and women, but come not near any man upon whom is the mark and begin on my sanctuary. Then they began at the ancient men which were before the house, and he said unto them, Defile the house and fill the courts with the slain. Go ye forth. And they went forth and slew in the city, man. Okay? So ain't no time to feel bad for these two third ass, wicked ass niggas, man. Sirach Ecclesiastes. 12 and 13, who will pity a charmer that is bitten with a serpent or any of such come not wild beasts? So one that go to a sinner is defiled with him in his sins. Who will pity, man? That's right. They wanted to follow after the ways of sin. They wanted to have to follow after uh, Esau, Edom. They wanted to follow after Satan. Okay, so now when they get defiled by hanging with them, 
you know, why would you feel bad for them? It's like the same person approaching a wild beast. It's like, bro, you knew that was a wild animal. Why was you messing with it? Like shit was sweet. So now when the wild animal attacks you and bites you and destroys your ass, are you going to feel bad for a person like that? Not likely, man. All right. They, they reap what they sown, man. Let me get this preset real quick. This is uh, Wisdom of Solomon 2. And uh, verse 23, for the most high created man to be immortal and made him to be an image of his own eternity. Nevertheless, through envy of the devil came death into the world and they that do hold of his side do find it. That's right. So if you hold to the side of the wickedness, all right, you're going to find death, man. All right. Wisdom of Solomon 1 and verse 15, for righteousness is immortal, but ungodly men with their works and, word and words called it to them for when they thought to have it their friend, talking about wickedness. They consumed to not and made a covenant with it because they are worthy to part to take part with it. And that's death. And that's destruction, man. OK. Jeremiah 11 and 14. Therefore, pray not thou for this people, neither lift up a cry or a prayer for them. For I will not hear them in the time that they cry unto me for their trouble, man. That's right, man. Don't feel bad for these wicked ass two third ass niggas, man. All right. These niggas is never going to change, man. All right, Jeremiah 13 and 23. Can the Ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots? Then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. That's right. They're never going to change. All right. Matthew 7 and 16. Ye shall know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. That's right. That's why the scriptures say what? Whosoever is uh, born of the most high is sinneth not. So that's those good trees, the elect. First John 5 and 18. We know that whosoever is born of the most high sinneth not, but he that is begotten of the most high keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. That's right. The elect cannot be plucked out of the most high's hands. All right. Let me see. I got another one. First John 3 and 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of the Most High was made manifest, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of the Most High doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of the Most High. That's right. There is no charge laid up against the elect. The elect are going to be found without God. All right. You know, the elect cannot be plucked from the Most High's hands, man. All right. But the, but the wicked of our people. Okay. They are the seed of the devil. You are of your father, the devil, man. Okay. Matthew uh, 7 and 18. I read it again. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And that's why John the Baptist told them, look, how is it that you evil men, old generation of vipers, right? Who warned you of the wrath to come? <laughs> okay. You know, Matthew 3 and uh, I'll get this one. Uh, let me see. Luke 3 and 7, then said he to the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him, all generation of vipers, talking about those wicked scribes and Pharisees, who have warned you to flee from the wrath to come, man. All right, and I think there's another one, too, where it basically goes into, like, uh, if I'm not mistaken, like, um, uh, that might be a different precept. Here it is. This is actually how I said this. Matthew 12 and 34. Oh, generation of vipers. Let me start at verse 33. Matthew 12 and 33. Either make the tree good and his fruit good or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. Oh, generation of vipers. How can ye being evil speak good things? That's right. They ain't never going to change. Two thirds of our people will never change, man. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. A good man out of the good treasure of his of the heart bringing forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringing forth evil things, man. That's right, man. Okay, going back to Matthew seven and uh nineteen, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire 
Wherefore, by their fruits, ye shall know them. That's right. Two thirds of people are going to be hewn down and thrown into that lake of fire, man. Because they ain't never going to change. Proverbs 29 and 9. If a wise man contendeth with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. That's right. So, you know, you could go back and forth with a two third, with a fool all day, whether you laughing or whether you getting upset. All right. There's no rest. He's never going to his fool. His foolishness is not going to depart from him, man. Proverbs 27, 22, though thou shouldest bray a fool in a mortar among meat, among wheat with the pestle, yet will not his foolishness depart from him, man. That's right. So you could grind down a two third all day with all the precepts and the proof and the facts, you know, showing that, look, this is what it is. Yet he will his foolishness not depart from him, man. And, that's, and that goes to show you that the heavenly father truly did blind them, man. They truly did a stumble at that stumbling block, which they were appointed to. Like it says in 1 Peter 2 and 8, from the foundation of the world, two-thirds were chosen to be two-thirds from the foundation of the world, man. 1 Peter 2 and 8, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them would stumble at the word being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed, man. Yeah, they were appointed to be wicked. They were appointed to stumble at Yahweh Shai, man. You know? But as for the elect, the elect have been chosen since the foundation of the world to be of that elect. Okay, good is set against evil, life against death, so is the godly against the sinner, and the sinner against the godly, man. Okay, the scriptures also speak about how the uh, the the, uh, the the just is an abomination to the wicked, man. Let me see, you gotta get that real quick. So two thirds, they hate us, man. They hate us, man. All right, uh, Proverbs twenty nine twenty seven it says, an unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked, man. That's it, man. Okay. So don't be surprised when you be brotherly to a two third and he don't reciprocate that energy, man. Okay. Now that doesn't mean you lose your cool and you try to pick a problem with them. Just understand their nature. You know. Just understand their nature, man. You know. Don't don't be offended. Just understand their nature. Now I'm not saying that they ain't gonna do something that won't offend you. But I'm just saying, like, look, don't get don't get all, you know, dumbfounded, man. Just know that's just the way that they are, man. OK, so, you know, just expect it. Really? Uh, so Ecclesiastes 1 and 25, the parables of knowledge are in the treasures of wisdom. But godliness is an abomination to a sinner, man. All right. Uh, Proverbs 13 and 19, the desire is a the desire accomplishes sweet to the soul. But it's abomination to fools to depart from evil. That's right. Okay. Uh, and then let me get this last one if the Lord allows. Unless the spirit want me to grab something else, man. So I believe the point has been made, man. Cannot trust these niggas under whatsoever circumstance, man. No matter what. Even when even when even when they might be cool with you at one point, a two third, he being peaceable, he being cool with you, he being nice, he might have did you a favor or whatever. You got to understand, they're taken captive under Satan's will at any moment. At, you know, anybody in the flesh can technically be taken captive by Satan's will. But for the elect, all right, it's a little different. The elect have that spiritual immunity to know, damn, I got a demon on me. Or damn, you know, I'm tripping right now. You know what I'm saying? Scripture say a man of understanding knows when he's slipping, right? And the elect are men of understanding. So the elect have that spiritual immunity built up through those spiritual attacks. And at the same time, the heavenly father, Yahweh Bashem is fighting for them. So the elect aren't given over to Satan's possession, you know, as easy as a two third is. So a demon can hop on a two third, you know, whenever, man, you know, at any given moment. You know what I'm saying? So don't be surprised, man. This is uh, Sarah Ecclesiastes 33. And uh, verse 14, good is set against evil and life against death. So is the godly against the sinner and the sinner against the godly. So look upon all the works of the Most High and there are two and two, one against another, man. That's right, man. Sir Ecclesiastes 42, 24, all things are double one against another and he hath made nothing imperfect. Isaiah 45 and 7 says, I, I form the light and create darkness. I make peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Proverbs 11 and 1, false balance of abomination to the Lord. So that's that balance. Lord willing, we be on the right-hand side. Two-thirds right now, they're on the left-hand side. Now, they're going to come back in the kingdom. They're going to be in the right mind in the kingdom. Okay? But in the kingdom, they're going to they're gonna be upset and they're going to feel bad because of all the wicked shit that they did. All right? Ezekiel 6 and 9, And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations, whether they shall be carried captives. Because I am broken with their whorish heart, which had departed from me and with their eyes, 
which go whoring after their idols, and they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. And see, that, that applies to us, Lord, when we be a part of their elect. We're loathing ourselves now in these times, man. You know, because we're remembering our evil ways. We're remembering the ways of our forefathers. Okay? But two-thirds in the kingdom, that's going to apply to them, you know, a, a thousand times more. That's why the scriptures say in the book of Daniel, some shall wake to everlasting life and some shall wake to everlasting shame and contempt. Man, when they come back in the kingdom, they're going to have that everlasting shame and contempt. For a long time, two-thirds are going to feel shameful for how they treated the Lord on this side and how they treated his elect. Ezekiel 36 and 31. Then shall you remember your own evil ways and your doings that were not good and shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for your iniquities and for your abominations, man. All right. That's it, man. You know, that's the point. OK. And, uh, you know, I believe the point has been made through the spirit. Just wanted to bring that out, man, because, you know, you got a lot of you, you'll come into this truth and you'll be new and you'll think, you know, two thirds, you know, they're your brothers and. You'll be brotherly with them and all that extra stuff, but nah, bro. Nah, not on this side, man. Not on this side, man. You're going to see when a two-third trying to chase you down and put you to death in Jacob's trouble, you're going to see in that day that they they never really was your friend. All right, but I'll be out this video. It's edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to you. How about Shema? Shai, about Shema? Kaku, Dash, Honest. To the apostles that was great, most of them that were well. Peace and blessings to the elect of Israel. Shalom and above all.